We want to graph one complete cycle of y equal cosine x, and we want that complete cycle to be between 0 and 2 pi. So I'm going to start by making a little table of values over here, and then I'll take the values that I get from the table, the ordered pairs, and plot them over here on this coordinate system. So first of all, when x is equal to 0, cosine of 0 is going to be 1. When x is pi over 4, the cosine of pi over 4, or 45 degrees, is going to be 1 over square root 2, which I'm going to approximate with 0 0.7 as a decimal. So cosine of pi over 4, 1 over square root 2 as a decimal, 0 0.7. Cosine of pi over 2 is going to be 0. Cosine of 3 pi over 4 is going to be negative 1 over square root 2. So again, I'll approximate that with negative 0 0.7. Cosine of pi, I'm going to be back down to negative 1. 5 pi over 4, when I find the cosine, 1 over square root 2, and it's negative. Approximately negative 0 0.7. 3 pi over 2, cosine of 3 pi over 2. Do it on the calculator or look on the unit circle, whatever you want to do. Maybe you have it memorized. Cosine of 3 pi over 2 is going to be 0. 7 pi over 4, that'll be 1 over square root 2. And again, I'll approximate that with 0 0.7. Cosine of 2 pi, I'm back up to positive 1. So each of these rows in the table gives me an ordered pair, x, y, where y is the cosine of x. So let's plot our first ordered pair here, x equals 0, y equals 1. I'll go over here to my graph, x is 0, y is 1. I get this point on the graph. My second ordered pair will be pi over 4 and 0 0.7. You can see here I have pi over 2, so pi over 4 will be halfway between those two, and my y value will be 0 0.7. So let's see, here's pi over 4, and I'll go up to 0 0.5, 0 0.75, so let me just drop down a little bit to 0.7. At pi over 2, cosine is 0, so when x is pi over 2, y is equal to 0. When I get to 3 pi over 4, 3 fourths of pi, that's going to be halfway between these two points right here on the x-axis, 3 pi over 4. I'll get negative 1 over square root 2, or negative 0.7. So I'm going to start here and go down to about negative 0.7. When x is pi, cosine of pi is negative 1, so I have x equal pi, y equal negative 1. And I'll go down here. And then I'm going to go back up at 5 pi over 4, which is right here. 5 pi over 4, I'm going to have negative 0.7 again. 3 pi over 2, y will be equal to 0. And then at 7 pi over 4, I go to 0.7 again. So let me see if I can get this right. And at 2 pi, y is equal to 1. Okay, so there I have some points on the graph of y equal cosine x. Now, if I was to do even more subdivisions of this, go to pi over 8, for instance, and find the corresponding value of y, maybe I'd do it on my calculator, I would see that it would just fall in line with these other points that I have right here. So I'm just going to connect these with a nice smooth curve. And this is going to be the graph of one complete cycle of y equal cosine x for x between 0 and 2 pi. Now, after this, if I continue on in this direction, my cosine curve is just going to come back down and go back up again. I'm going to repeat all the values of y that I just found. Likewise, on this side, if I go down this way with negative pi over 2, negative pi, so on and so forth, that's going to repeat in that direction. So this is what I call one complete cycle of y equal cosine x. And this is something that you want to be able to graph very quickly. If somebody says, what does the graph of y equal cosine x looks like? You want to be able to draw a little coordinate system, label these points on the x-axis, these on the y-axis, and just sketch this graph out real quickly. So let's look at a couple things with this graph. We have this definition for amplitude. 
one half of the largest value of y minus the smallest value of y. So in our case, this is going to be one half of the absolute value of the largest value of y is 1 minus the smallest value of y is negative 1. I want the absolute value of that. So 1 subtract negative 1 is going to be 1 plus 1 or 2, the absolute value of which is 2. So 1 half of 2 is going to be 1. So this graph has an amplitude of 1. The period is the distance on the x-axis it takes for this to go through one complete cycle. And like I said, this graph repeats itself on both sides after this, so the period for the cosine graph is going to be 2 pi. Every 2 pi units on the x-axis, this graph will repeat itself. So this 2 pi right here, if I went out another 2 pi, I'd see I'd get the same curve, so on and so forth. It's a periodic function with a period of 2 pi. Okay, so there's a look at graphing y equal cosine x by making a table of values, using the table of values to find points on the curve, connecting them with a nice smooth curve. Next, we want to look at the graph of y equal cosine x between negative 4 pi and positive 4 pi. So over here on the board, I've written or I've drawn in one complete cycle of y equal cosine x between x equals 0 and x equal 2 pi. So remember, the graph starts at 1, y is equal to 1 when x is equal to 0, drops down to 0 when x is equal to pi over 2, then negative 1, back up to 0, and then back up to 1. And that represents one complete cycle of that curve, and that curve is going to repeat itself now every 2 pi units on the x-axis. So this distance right here is 2 pi, so the same thing is going to happen. I'm going to start at 1, I'll drop down to 0, then at 3 pi, I'm going to get negative 1, back up to 0, and then at 4 pi, I'm going to end up with 1 again. So there's my graph on that interval. And then I'll have the same thing happening over on this side. So I'll start at 1, I'm going to drop down to 0, then negative 1, back up to 0, and then back up to 1. So here, is the graph between 0 and negative 2 pi. And then since I want to go from negative 4 pi to positive 4 pi, I'm going to have one other cycle right here. Starts at 1, back down to 0, down to negative 1, up to 0, and then back up to 1. So that is going to look like this. So here is 1, 2, 3, four complete cycles of my curve y equal cosine x. And what I want to do is just frame this little part right here because this is my basic one complete cycle. So I'll put that in that little rectangle right here. Here's my one complete cycle, the basic graph of y equal cosine x between x equals 0 and x equal 2 pi. And then that picture just repeats itself every two pi units on the x-axis because the period of y equal cosine x is two pi. Next, we want to use our graph of y equal cosine x to find some zeros for the cosine function. So I've written over here, find x if zeros less than or equal to x less than or equal to two pi. So if x is between zero and two pi and cosine x equals zero. So you know that this is the definition for the zero of a function. If cosine of x is equal to zero, then x is called a zero of that function. So if I look over here on the graph between zero and two pi, I want all the values on the x-axis that give me a y value of zero. So what I'm talking about here is this point and this point. Those two points are the points at which, x, at which the graph of y equal cosine x crosses the x-axis, and those two points give me zeros for the function. So my zeros for this function are x equal pi over 2 and x equal 3 pi over 2, because these are the values of x between 0 and 2 pi for which cosine x is equal to 0. Now, let's just take a minute and take this a little bit further and answer this question. Suppose that x is between negative 4 pi and positive 4 pi, and we want to find all the zeros in that region. Well, that's going to extend from here out to here, everywhere that this graph crosses the x-axis. 
So I look at my graph right here and I say, well, there's one zero. That's going to, that point is going to give me one zero, that value of x. Same with this one over here. Let's make sure we label these things correctly. I'm going to go along the x-axis now and say there's one pi over two, two pi over two, right? Two pi over two is the same as pi. Three pi over two, four pi over two. So this must be five pi over two, six pi over two, seven pi over two, eight pi over two. So I get two zeros right here at five pi over two and seven pi over two. Now let's back up this way. Here's pi over two, so this must be negative pi over two, negative two pi over two, negative three pi over two, negative four pi over two, negative five pi over two, negative six pi over two, and then finally over here, negative seven pi over two. So let me move over here, negative seven pi over two. So as I go in the negative direction, I have negative one pi over two, negative two pi over two, negative three pi over two, negative four pi over two, negative five, negative six, negative seven, negative eight pi over two. So where are my zeros? My zeros are everywhere that this graph crosses the x-axis. Those values of x give me a zero for the function. So the answer to this question down here is x equal negative seven pi over two, negative five pi over two, negative three pi over two, negative pi over two, then pi over two, three pi over two, five pi over two, and seven pi over two. All of these are zeros for the function y equal cosine x if x is in between negative four pi and positive four pi. Okay, we have a nice diagram in the book of the unit circle and you can use it to find cosine and sine of a lot of the common angles. Just wanna remind you about that unit circle that it has a radius of one. And so if I have an angle in standard position, the point on the terminal side of theta that intersects the unit circle, if its coordinates are x, y, then that x coordinate is the cosine of theta and the y coordinate is the sine of theta. So you can use that diagram in the book to look up a lot of these exact values. You'll notice that at five pi over four for that angle, the ordered pair associated with it is negative one over square root two and negative one over square root two. Well, that number right there is the cosine of negative five pi over four, and that's the sine of negative five pi over four. Now we're classifying our sine and cosine functions here in a little more detail. The sine function is an odd function because sine of negative theta is always equal to negative sine theta. So if you have a negative sign here with your angle, you can bring it out in front if you want and just write down the sine of theta. In the same manner, the cosine of negative theta is equal to just the cosine of theta because cosine happens to be an even function. So functions that do this are called even functions. Functions that do this are called odd functions. Now you can justify those things to yourself and once you do, then you just wanna remember that sine is odd and cosine is even as far as functions are concerned. Now, let's use this information to work one of the problems. We'll go to the next board. So I wanna find the cosine of negative 60 degrees. I know that cosine is an even function, so that tells me I can write this as cosine 60 degrees. The cosine of negative 60 and the cosine of 60 will always be the same because cosine's an even function. Now, cosine of 60 degrees, I can go to the unit circle, or maybe by now you have these exact values memorized, but in any case, cosine of 60 degrees one half. So that's how we find cosine of negative 60 by using the fact that cosine is an even function and then looking up our value for cosine of 60. Next let's find the sine of negative 30 degrees. So I have sine of negative 30 degrees. I know that sine is an odd function so that tells me I can write this as negative sine of positive 30 degrees. Okay, negative sine positive 30 degrees, then I can go to the unit circle, I can use my calculator, maybe I've memorized these values. I know that the sine of 30 degrees is one half. 
So the sine of negative 30 degrees is the same as negative sine 30 degrees, which must be negative one half. Okay, I have a little identity I want to prove here. I have written sine negative theta times cotangent negative theta is equal to cosine theta. Let's see if we can prove this identity. There's a couple different ways to go about it. Let's try this. I'm going to start by writing this left side as sine negative theta, and instead of cotangent, I'm going to write cosine over sine. So cosine negative theta over sine negative theta. Okay, and then I see I have sine negative theta here. This is being multiplied by sine negative theta, so I can divide those out. This becomes cosine negative theta. And now I know that cosine of theta is an even function, so the cosine of negative theta is also the cosine of theta. So there I've succeeded in changing this left side into the right side. So I've proved this identity.